Hey everybody and welcome to my channel, A Lefty Knitter Podcast, here on the YouTubes. This is episode 193 and my name is Aquila and I'm in Baltimore, Maryland and it is very cold today. Not as cold as some places, but it's pretty chilly, 15 degrees with I think the wind gusts, but okay. So there's your weather report. We have cats, we have husbands, we have um, kids. So yeah, let's get this started. Normally I record through the week, like vlog-ish style, and then sh smush it all together and post on Saturdays. Well, today is already Saturday, February 4th. This week has just flown by and I didn't have really a chance to do a lot of recording. So I'm gonna be showing you everything in one clip. So you're welcome. I have uh, two finished objects and I have the new sweater I cast on. So do you guys remember I showed you the picture last week of the home card of it, home cardigan by Kadri, I believe. And so I have cast that on and I have made a lot of progress. US size 10 needles and Aran weight yarn flies by, or at least it's been flying by for me. So let me just show you that first since that's what I've mostly been doing a lot of work on. I am using that Trendsetter Yarns Union. And I can't remember if I said this right in the last episode because I was like, after I said it, I was like, oh, those numbers don't equal 100%. So let's just reread this. It is 52% recycled merino and 48% recycled acrylic. I, it feels nice. I haven't had any issues with it. This is the burgundy color. I think I got 10 balls of this and I got it from uh, when Naughty Lady Yarns was in business in Oregon. They are now since closed and I got it when they were closing and I got it for like super cheap. I know I mentioned that. I am so far. I am so far. I am on ball, I believe I'm on ball five already, but it is a cardigan so I'm working back and forth and it also has I guess it's considered a drop shoulder, so the the sleeves are going to be picked up around, you know, it comes out pretty far and you pick up that way. I could put this on and give you guys kind of a visual, but I'll hold it up first. Um, I have purple waist yarn in there, so just ignore that it will come out. And I'm making the size large, the fourth size, because it's extra small, small, medium, large. Look at that, look at that. It's curling a lot, so you have to ignore that it's curling. Oh, that's the uh, inside. <laughs> that is the pearl side. Let me show you the outside. I tried remembering how to do German short rows from memory, and the one side looks okay, and the other side looks better. So you knit the back, and then you pick up at the top here and then you go forward. Look at that. So it is curling in on itself. I love it so much. Which side is the yarn going to be on? Okay. Let's make a fool of myself trying to put this on on camera. The needles are, the cord is way too short. But we'll do it anyway. There you go. So I'm ready for the ribbing. It's so exciting. So like I was saying, the drop shoulder will come out pretty far. It, you know, because it's a 50-50 like merino acrylic, I didn't, I didn't actually wet block this when I did my swatch. This I thought was going to be more of a quote home cardigan when I'm wearing it just around the house. It might not end up being that. It might be a wear out cardigan. I don't know. Um, so I'm so happy with this and it's just it's really flying so so yeah I have ribbing at the bottom I'll have a neck band and then I have some sleeves and I'm telling you how fast this went it's ridiculous now let's watch me struggle get out of it oh it wasn't so bad it wasn't so bad so it's good we have the Luna the white cat so there's white cat hair like all over this I am really excited about it. Um, also, I know not everybody's jam is my cranking video, so 
I appreciate anybody who hasn't left due to uh, the also the amount of videos I've been doing that are cranking. I hope that you'll just, you know, skip over those and stick with me for the knitting content if that's what you're here for, like the hand knitting and crafting and other content. Um, I just know it's not everybody's jam to watch. I'm doing it more for like learning experiences for myself and to put the content out there because there's just not a ton of it on the circular knitting machines. Circular sock machines, whatever you would like to call it. <laughs> it's really a circular knitting machine if you think about it because you can do way more than just socks on it. I have this idea in my head that I can't get out and I might have to try it this weekend. It's gonna be another doll, but I have this idea. <laughs> And I really hope I can make it work because I'd be really excited about it. Yeah. So the next thing I'm going to show you was cranked on my machine. So I got this yarn from Terry um, and Brian, who are the owners of At Haynes House. I'll link everything down below that I talk about. They are... Um, he, uh, they're Virginia. I believe they're in Virginia. So they're local to me. I've seen, I see them at quite a few shows in, in the area. They had an unfortunate circumstance at the last, it was Maryland, I believe. Maryland was when it was super rainy. Yes. Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival was so rainy. There was wind. There was catastrophes for some of the vendors that had like, um, tents outside. So... If you're new to the channel <laughs> there's interruptions um paused and did handled so they had posted a bunch of the yarn had fallen and they weren't going to take it home it fallen in wet muddy grass and they weren't going to take it all home and wash it all so they were just going to just do a sale on it so i did get to their booth and they had some dk weight left and this is the Community DK Base. Oh, this is their label at Haynes House. And this colorway, it, it's a DK, 100% Superwash Merino. I know not the greatest for making socks, but I also feel like you can make socks. 231 yards, 100 grams. And this is the colorway Unicorn of Truth. So all of their colorways have a story and here's their story. Terry once read that unicorns could tell if someone was lying because Emmanuel had a great sense of wisdom. She started, she, she started calling him the Unicorn of Truth. So this is the color Unicorn of Truth. It's so beautiful. So let me show you the first sock. It's really pretty, right? Really pretty. I did a hung hem, which I don't know where my brain was at. I was not doing these in a rush, but I was doing them in a rush. Um, so I did a 15 row hung hem, which means it's only like a seven or eight row hem. It's really short. Normally I do 15 row hung hem, meaning it's 30 rows total. So it's 15, um, show it like doubled over. So I think it turned out really beautiful. Look at that color. I mean, so pretty. And then this one I started and I weighed my cone and I was like, oh, I have more than 50 grams left. I have 50, you know, at least 50, right? So I did the, right, the corrected hem. This one is 15 total, 30 double. So I'm cranking and I'm like gonna lose it yarn chicken. <laughs> I lost at Yarn Chicken. I really thought I was going to have enough. So I am, I, I'm not sure what, I'm not sure why I didn't, but I didn't. So I did a DP on these also. That's another tutorial I'm going to try to record uh, for the, the circular knitting machines. Um, so what I ended up using was the DK that was left over from I made a hat out of it. I made some fingerless gloves out of it. And then this is yarn John dyed, Emily's uh, fleece. It was called Emily's fleece, which I made a hat out of. I made fingerless gloves and now it's the toe of a sock. And I have a little bit left of this actually. This is now all gone because I did a Russian join and just joined it as the next color. 
but I have a finished shop pair and uh, I still think they're awesome. I, I love crazy socks, so this doesn't bother me in the least, even though these aren't for me, but that's a whole other story. This is going to be a shorter episode and I'm not going to apologize because I just didn't have the content this week. I have one more thing to actually show you because I, I told you I had two finished objects. So I finished the hat that I had cast on as a uh, easy knitting project for when I meet with my knitting group at the brewery and it's kind of dark in there and hats are always an easy thing to kind of just go to so I had uh, started this I don't remember where I was when I last showed you guys probably in here somewhere but I finished it and I decreased and I closed it off it is reminiscent of the photographer hat which the photographer hat uses I believe it's DK or worsted I use a this is I cast on 96 stitches. These are both like a DK, um, sorry, these are both like a worsted weight. US size four for the ribbing, US size six for the top. It's supposed to be like a half and half, five inches, five inches, and then decrease. Uh, didn't really follow that per se. I used up every scrap of this and then I, ca I added this. This was fisherman's wool that I had gotten and John had dyed it over to make a sweater for his, sister. I knit the sweater. He dyed the yarn. Um, what is the deal with fisherman's wool? I have seen so many people talking about fisherman's wool lately. Did they rebrand it? Because I could have swore the ball that I saw on the girls, the Canadian girls. Oh my god, why can't I think of their name? The four sisters. I could have swore they showed a ball of it. And it's not the big hang, like ball, like thing anymore. I'm gonna have to look at this up, but, um, and it's mostly natural colors, if I remember right, so, and then this was, uh, Knit Picks Bear Tweed, and I think it has, like, baby alpaca in it that John had dyed, and I, he thought he had felted all the skeins, so we kept them all, and... They really weren't felted. I ended up cranking them all on my Addy machine. The blanket is actually over there. I cranked them all on my Addy machine and put all the panels together to make like this really super cozy, comfy blanket. It's not quite big enough. It's definitely more of a lap blanket, not a lay down and cover your feet and all the way up to your chin blanket. <laughs> but it's really cozy to have. Um, so we had some remnants of that left because I couldn't get a whole nother length tube to match so that's why we had some leftover like I said this is going to be hopefully the year I'm trying to use up a bunch of stuff like I just was on a phone call with um a friend uh, we talked we we have our coffee talking we have our coffee dates um and uh I'm just gonna, I mean I've talked about her before I don't know why I'm being ridiculous about it okay I was talking to Chevis <laughs> We have coffee dates and we talk and we knit and we drink coffee and, you know, shoot the shit, so to say, whatever the saying is. And I just don't, I, I'm really trying to use yarn. Like I, I was saying to her about, I have all these little single skeins, right? I have a ton of single skeins and I have a sock machine. Why am I not just like cranking the stuff out and not feeling overwhelmed? I don't feel overwhelmed. I shouldn't say that, but I have a lot of yarn. I really do. And I'm very lucky to say that I have a lot of yarn, you know, just in general. And, you know, I, I don't want to destash it because I do love it. So I need to just use it like, and then recently I've been trying to buy yarn with a purpose. So like when I bought the yarn from the store that was closing, I bought like three sweater quantities and had the sweater picked out already. And I'm making the third one now. Like I've knit the other two, two out of three. I'm I'm well on my way to having that done. And I have some other sweater quantities. And like when I was at Frederick recently, like over the fall Frederick Fiber Festival, I bought yarn to make a shirt, like a summer type shirt. And I just need to now knit with that. So I'm trying to buy more with purpose than just buying random skeins. So that's not always going to happen. And 
I'm not gonna like hold myself to it or make myself feel guilty because that's not healthy, <laughs> but yeah. Speaking of healthy, done with the yarn. So I understand if you, oh, I have one other thing. I have one other thing I wanna show you guys. I, that is yarn related. Let me actually get that first. All right, I got it. But I had to grab my tablet because I have to read um, something that I want to put out into the universe. So I had contacted this uh, shop on Etsy. They had all these different handles and they could insert all these different kind of things. So they could insert latch hooks and they could insert um, different tools for different things like um, seam rippers and crochet hook tops and all this other stuff. The, the Etsy shop is called Dunlap Custom Crafts. So I'm gonna um, put this here, show you guys. This is their little tag that came. So I'd contacted them, right? <clears throat> and I was like, I love your handles. Do you by chance have a latch hook so, uh, a latch hook that is this size and I had measured one of my needles from my circular knitting machine and I said do you have any in this size because I would love to have it for my knitting machine and she said they said no they did not have any that fit that size but they were hoping to possibly have them in the future I said great that's fine thank you you know I wasn't really in the market for one but I had come across their site and I was like might as well message them so, I don't know, a few months go by, I guess, and I get a message on Etsy, and it says, hey, we have been able to acquire some knitting machine needles. Would you still be interested? And I was like, heck yeah, like, thank you for, t like, remembering me first off, and then letting me know. I immediately go, and I look at all the different styles, and I picked a handle, and I bought it. And I asked them in the messages, I was like, is there anything I can tell, you know, I have a podcast, is there anything I can tell the my viewers about your uh, shop? And so I'm going to just read it right now. Uh, I believe their names are Britt and Devin. And she said, they said they looked up my podcast, that was really awesome. Um, feel free to send other knitters our way. They had to get a 50 pack of those hooks. So they have plenty of the hooks and they have handles already pre-made. So all you have to do is place your order and they insert it and glue it and do the, and then ship it. I mean, it came like in two days. It was amazing. Um, and so the gist of their business is that her husband started making handles because her hand hurt way too much to do crafting. Got to thinking that if it could help me, it could help and do wonders for others. That is actually why we originally opened the shop. One of our big driving factors is doing the crafts we love helps others do the crafting they love. So anything along those lines would be great. Well, I just read their lines. So I feel like they're, they realize there might be more need for people that need a more um, solid handle. I know there's a lot of different people out there making handles for crochet hooks and whatnot, but these are also, um, they have natural ones, but this one was painted and I just thought it was really pretty. So here's my, here's my hook. So it's got the, sorry, my cat got me right in the palm. So here is the knitting machine needle. This is actually the needle that is in my machine. So if I drop a stitch or I need to fix a stitch, I can use this tool to fix that stitch. And then here is my fun handle. So even if you don't have a need to maybe buy this, or maybe you know someone who might have a need to purchase this, I highly suggest supporting people. They're um, not local here, but they're in Texas. And there's, I think I probably came across them because when I do searches, I search for, um, Etsy sellers that usually have lower numbers in their sales because I want to help support somebody that um, is just a maybe getting started or just doesn't have a lot of sales. So that's a lot of times what happens. And so it was very nice that they thought about me. So yeah, they just made the size they needed to get this hook in there. And now I have a new tool for my machine and I really love it. And I'm really happy to have this. I, um, have not used it yet <laughs> because I 
wanted to A, show it on the podcast, and I haven't had any drop stitches, <laughs> knock on wood. I do have a reel coming out that I'm going to help try to promote this a little, um, so that will be funny. I've been trying to, um, as I've told you guys, make my output on all the social medias a little bit better. Um, putting out content, it's hard. You don't always have content to put out. And so, yeah, there we go. All right, so let's see. Reading, I haven't been doing much reading. I've been listening to uh, You're Gonna Die at Their podcast. And then I was also listening to another podcast and I'll put the name down below. Uh, who mentioned it? Oh my gosh, this is terrible. Oh, uh, oh my God. Texas, crochet. Why am I not thinking of her name? That's so terrible. She gives the best hugs. <laughs> it's all about the islands and different stories about islands, like talking about the Caribbean islands or Caribbean islands. I've always not been sure how you say that. Caribbean or Caribbean? Either way. Caribbean. What is it? Caribbean. Caribbean. My kid's correcting me. She says it's Caribbean. It was in your book, in a book you were reading? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've been, I started uh, at the first episode. There's not a whole lot of episodes, so I was like, I'm going to start at the beginning. It is very informative and history that you might not know. So that's what I've been doing. It, it, and, it, and it kind of fell right in place after I had read Island Queen or listened to Island Queen, which I told you guys about a few episodes ago. So... And yeah, other than that, we watched the new Minions movie, didn't we, Hayes? It was so good. Um, Raising Gru, what was it called? The Rise of Gru. That was good. And then I, we started watching Matilda the Musical. I had, okay, Hazel finished it. I didn't finish it. I had went and did, I had to do something else. Hazel said it was very good. So I will probably end up watching that on my own at some point. Uh, just the ending because I saw most of it. Um, yeah, but that was really good. Like what I saw of it was really good. And that's about it. Other than that, it's been um, just a lot going on with my, just doing stuff with my job. And John's been really busy with his job and Hayes has been not quite so busy with school, but she did really good on her report card, so that was really good. And I got to take dinner, and I picked McDonald's because McDonald's is the best. Did you hear that? You might not have heard that. She got to pick dinner. What did she pick? McDonald's. I love McDonald's. <laughs> uh, not the biggest fan of McDonald's. I mean, yes, french fries and fountain coke, all about it. <laughs> but my hair keeps getting cold. I need to go to the eye doctor. Okay, well, I was going to say speaking of health, and then I think I went and talked about something else. Okay, speaking of our health, I had my annual exam today. The ladies, not today, the ladies doctor this week. So make sure if you have the means to be able to go and do that. And did you know that you now get mammograms at 40? Yeah, I should have got mine last year and I didn't. So that will be fun. But yes, so if you have the means to be able to go and see your doctors regularly, make sure you're doing that. That is part of your self-care and self, self-help. self um, So yeah, that's where we are. I'm going to round this up, get this all edited, whatever I have to edit uh, <laughs> of this and that's it. So until the next episode, please take care of yourselves, check in on your loved ones and the people you care about, and, you know, happy crafting. Bye. Well, I don't know why. Why? Because um, we have Raz, it's, it's an app called Raz Plus that we play. Yeah, Raz Plus. And I was learning about, um, what was that movie called again? It was like the pirate that stole shit. You were like Pirates of the Caribbean? Yeah. Um, 
that it corrected it. It's oh, it corrected it when you were listening to the book on Raz. Yeah. 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 Raz Kids. It's called Raz Kids, but we yeah. call it Raz Plus. Yeah. I love this thing so much. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess you're ready for your spa day then, huh? All right. You want to say well, bye? I can't be ready because it, this thing has, is over at 1 o'clock. And well, it's only 12, it's 12. and 7. Oh. Because you're just waiting for the Orbeez to get yeah, all filled up. Yeah, but the Orbeez are, like, basically all filled up. They are, like, all filled up. I love this thing. All right. Well, foot spa Orbeez. All right. Bye. No, no bye. Bye. Okay.